Good evening, welcome to RSL Today. My name's Keith Harrison, I'm Commemorations and Fundraising Manager for RSL South Australia and with me in the studio this evening is our co-host. Got it right this time, David? I no, you got it wrong. Oh, what did I do? It's afternoon. Oh, afternoon, yeah. When does that become? During, two weeks, during winter? Doesn't two weeks evening, ago. Doesn't evening start a little earlier? <laughs> they um, do, yes. Yeah. Good evening everyone, how are you? It is I. Yep, thanks I'm for here. putting the program together, David. Uh, another magnificent uh, uh, effort. Thank so, you, Keith. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. I know you, you really mean that. I do. And again, you're looking very, very well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Actually. I haven't seen you since yesterday. No, I haven't. <laughs> when you had lunch in the mess. And the AGM. Yep. Combined Ex Services Mess AGM. Thank goodness the committee uh, has r- remained the same. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of transferring over. Yeah, um, right. Mate, uh, we've got a very, very, very busy two, three days. Yep. Yeah. Things are starting to happen. Yeah, look, I'd just wish everyone a, a happy Anzac Day, if you can call it Anzac Day. Please show your respects, uh, pay your respects. Have a respectful Anzac Day. A respectful Anzac yeah. Day, yeah. And, and and did you have some enjoyment in it as well? Yes, so I will be. Pay your respects early, whether it's at a dawn service or by lighting up the dawn from home. Yeah. Uh, that, that's all that matters. And, and if, if they can avoid it, please don't pop into town. For the dawn service, because there will be restrictions. Good point. Yes, and the you, same with the march. You you will need to have a, already booked a ticket, and as of uh, yesterday, they were around a bit over two thousand of the two thousand five hundred had gone. I thought you were going to say they were two thousand dollars each. <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, look, the free tickets. They're from Eventbrite, but I, I can't promise you that there's uh, uh, any left now. So there's no. the tickets for the dawn service and tickets for the um, remembrance service at the Cross of Sacrifice. So. Uh, and there I, we go. And you've the, actually um, rattled, jogged a memory. Jogged my memory. I don't. I've been uh, invited by Ian Smith, the chair, to place a, um, a tribute on behalf of the Defence Force Welfare Association, but I haven't applied for a ticket. But no, if, if you're a guest, you're on the list. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so, whereas um, the general public n- need to have a QR uh, a ticket, an right. Eventbrite yeah. uh, digital ticket or, yeah. or or printed ticket, and they will enter through different gates. Um, oh, that's good. And, and okay. be checked in that way. So if you'd like to know more about Anzac Day, please go to our website, rslsa.org.au, and find the details. Uh, they're on the front page, linking to the Anzac page, or you find us under Events Anzac uh, that way. So uh, th- there are restrictions this year, so there's no public spectators for the march. We oh, there'll be people turning up, but as long well, as they're we, we can't them. encourage that no, because we've no, we've we've said that it'll only be relatives of those marching and eligible veterans who've chosen not to march. We've got to keep the numbers down yeah, yeah. To, to get the plan through, uh, which only got approved this week. Uh, so well, we no. and we had to apply yeah. months ago uh, yeah. for this on the um, conditions that applied at the time. So please don't jeopardise our any of our services or the march. By coming in when you when you shouldn't, and the march no. is for veterans only. Uh, no, no, no descendants. No, no descendants the descendants no. group. We we need that space this year because everyone's uh, uh, spaced wider and wider apart and deeper. And, and the circumstances the circumstances are extraordinary. We're in the middle of a COVID pandemic, pandemic. So people just need to realise that. And that there are circumstances beyond everybody's control, they just have to do it. Yeah, look, I hope they do understand because they're not being. No, there's a minority who are not being very polite on social media. Yes, well, you're always going to get. They understand. They're telling us even that it's our fault for giving into government regulation. So I, I don't know how you win. Um, well, you can't. You're damned if you do. Yeah, if so, you don't. Uh, so anyway, there we go. So the other thing is the Anzac appeal. We suffered last year because everything shut down uh, with the COVID. Uh, if I can remind people, please, uh, if if you can't find a collector or, uh, or or go into Office Works or Woolworths to pick up your merchandise or or a sub branch or a shopping centre where there are collectors, uh, please donate online at rslsa.org.au or anzacappeal.com.au. I was at my local office works down at Norlunga Centre the other day and uh, there was the box with very little merchandise in it. They've been doing very well. Yeah, that's good, isn't so it? So I was very pleased. I didn't yeah. say anything. Yeah. But no, it's good. Uh, very good. Now, Twitter. 
Oh, yes, of course. We've got uh, our phone number is 8100 <laughs> Email is admin at rslsa. The website is rslsa.org.au. And we have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And I would also like to advise people that we've got the RAF 100th anniversary commemorative wines for sale in the Combined X Services Mess at Torrance Parade Ground. And we're, that's a requirement that we have to do under our license application for takeoff so people can come in. Uh, order ringing Annette on eight two two seven zero nine eight zero Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays between nine and one thirty, and they can place an order. And we would love to have them place an order. The wines are very nice: three three whites, um, including a bubble, uh, two reds, and a very very nice port. So it's, it's a yeah, Shiraz. We'll, we'll continue plugging that. We'll Hopefully, plug that, yes. before much longer, you'll have your um, license yes, amendments it's, it's being dealt with. In the next couple of days. Yep. Um, now, what else, uh, David? I think we. Well, I don't think we've got a guest. I know you have a guest. We have a guest. We do. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Not bad. I'd like to introduce. Now, this is a mouthful. <laughs> Lieutenant Ringrose Vose Elizabeth. Liz, how are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's a pleasure. And you are from the Royal Australian Navy. I am. I'm uh, just over eleven years now in the Royal Australian Navy, and I am a Marine Engineer Officer. Hang on, let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was a mouthful. Yeah. Um, so, Liz, um, you don't look much older than about 19, if that, but obviously you are. But um, you've been in since 2010. Yes, yes, I have. And my understanding of it is, having talked with you after before, um, you didn't go to ADFA straight away. You did direct entry for a while at Creswell. Yeah, so the way the system works is that they want you to get a bit of uh, Navy experience before committing all that time at university. Yeah. And I think that's a very good idea, actually. Uh, it saves having people start their degree and spend a year or two or whatever it is, whatever the period is, and then they go to sea and, you know, oh, I don't like this. This is not for me. I get seasick. Yeah, <laughs> and then they leave and you've wasted all that expense, the experience, the, the you know the whole the whole raft I, of issues. I hadn't thought about that. I, oh no, we didn't know and, what happened. Yeah. And Navy do it very well. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the unless it's changed from when I was doing recruiting, but it used to be uh, Navy was the only mob that would do that first. Yeah. You would sign on, you would do a period of of sea time or or establishment time, then you would go to ADFA, whereas the other two services do it the other way around. Okay, and it's quite. I think it's a very good idea. Yeah. Look, we'd probably. Better get cracking with Liz's upbringing and what well, brought we know, her. We know where she was brought up. She told but the us. listeners done. <laughs> Liz, over to you. Go for it. All right. So I was born and raised in Canberra um, to a English father and a Filipino mother. Um, so growing up with them, we did travel overseas quite a bit to visit family, and that sort of sparked my interest in travelling. Um, and then when it came to maybe year eleven, year twelve. Uh, it seemed like the Navy was a good way to get paid to travel. It's an excellent way, isn't it? Uh, and so far it's been working out for me. Yeah. I, I, I was reading um, your bio. Uh, now, you've you've done some incredible things for, for not being in uh, the REN for that long. Um, HMAS Darwin, United States. Yes. You, you've certainly done a bit. Is Darwin a vessel or is Darwin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. HMAS Darwin. Darwin. Darwin the ship. Yeah, yeah. Darwin the ship, Darwin yeah. Darwin the ship. Yeah. Yeah, and so you've obviously, you know, as a marine engineering officer, you'd be in great demand. I, th I think so. Uh, I like to think I am. Yeah, um, no, I, I meant the branch. <laughs> yeah. Your the branch. branch. Yeah, uh, we are. Yeah, we are. Um, yeah. We like to say key to uh, keeping the ships at sea, keeping yeah. them running. Oh, definitely, so so definitely. I don't know much uh, what, what a marine engineer does. So is it about the running of the vessel, the, the mechanics of it? Or? They engineer marine things. Oh, okay. That was easy. Propulsion. Yeah. Propulsion, oh, okay. power. Yeah, all that, yeah. Anything auxiliary, yeah. Okay. fresh water. Wow. Uh, yes. Services, Sewage. Plumbing. Yes, yeah. all that sort of stuff. It's it's not just the, the nitty gritty stuff. It's everything. Yeah, yeah. no, a very very important branch. Nearly as important as the bosun's branch. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> I can say that. Yeah. Pregnant pause there. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Liz well, disagree. we need someone to steer the ship in the right direction. No, we'll, we'll, we'll keep we, it going for you. We you paint everything. Come on, you know that. If it doesn't paint, if it doesn't move, we paint it. If it does move, yeah. we salute it. That's right. Paint is one of the most crucial things we do in uh, yes. yeah. Remember our Australian mate that, Navy? that we had it keeps here. ships together. We had it does indeed. Remember our mate that we had in here several years ago that, and he was the paint man for the um, uh, down at Osborne. Yes, yes. Yeah. I see. I see him fairly regularly. And I can't think of his name now, yeah. but yeah, he he worked in the Boston store down yeah. there and paint everywhere. Yeah. So anyway, uh, getting back, was that your initial choice of career within the navy, and and you worked towards that, or did you have other? So at school, I was very good at maths and physics, so I knew I wanted to do engineering. So when I did you really at that at that young age? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Apparently, when I was about five years old, I announced to my mother that I was going to be an engineer. Good I on you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> never that? gave up on that. No, no good on oh, you. I've that's... got a niece who's an engineer, and oh, I think physics and maths is great. I hope some of my grandchildren uh, go that way. Um, and I had a grandfather in the Royal Navy, so that steered me yep. towards the Navy path. Obviously, um, a very fine, upstanding man. <laughs> So I applied yeah. for engineering in the Navy and that was uh, they, the only thing I applied for. Did they welcome you with open arms as a, as a prospective engineer? They did. They yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. So is, is there a particular place where you go to learn the craft or is it always on board or... Um, well, you, you would do your Bachelor of Engineering. So or? I did my Bachelor of Engineering at ADFA. That yeah. was a four-year degree. Mm. Um, after that, we get sent to a ship for the first time and in that role, we do Assistant Marine Engineer Officer. Yeah. Um, and that's basically trainee position, learn how to be an engineer at sea. Yep. Um, so I did my time on HMS Darwin, um, lucky enough to get a Middle East deployment um, out of that. So that was six months, um, a lot of work, but very valuable experience. Yeah, exceptional, yeah. So wh- when were you up in the Middle East? So that would have been uh, 2016, 2015, 2016. Yep. Um, That's those six-month deployments, is it, in the Gulf? Yes. Yeah, okay. That they've uh, sort of wrapped up now. So I was yeah. on the last deployment for HMAS Darwin, who has now sadly decommissioned. Yeah. So she's underwater now, isn't she? Or about to be? Um, sadly, they just took her apart. Oh, did they? Oh. They wrecked her? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realise that. No. Oh. Uh, it was the environmental aspects okay. of sinking a ship now are probably just a bit too much. She was. So That's was she interesting? A, was she a destroyer, a frigate, a DD, frigate. DDG, yeah. a, um, FFG, FFG? Yeah, Did FFG. I, there, is, there is no DDG, not anymore. Okay. Uh, there are now. Well, yes, oh. there, there, there are, are the new <laughs> DDGs. The, yes, oh. yeah, totally different type of ship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now the old DDGs were the, the original ones from um, that we got from. All right. So the what US was Darwin? Was an FFG. Okay. Yeah, Charles F. Adams class, I think it was. No, no. That was a DDG. Um, Oliver Perry Hazard. Was the American variant. Yes, and then yeah. we changed them slightly and we called them Ad- the Adelaide class. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and Adelaide was the first. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. So go on. Yeah, right. <laughs> you've, got the, you've got the mic. So are we, are we through the deployments yet or we've still got some to cover? You talked about America. Um, so um, after my time on Darwin, the next job for a marine engineer officer is a shore position. Um, where obviously a lot of maintenance happens on the ship, yeah. but we've got a lot of maintenance that has to happen alongside as well. Um, so my next job, I organised the external maintenance and helped organise the contractors to come on board and do that deeper level maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Now, do, you, do you have much... Is there storage area? I mean, obviously a, a vessel has storage area, but do you have to carry huge parts or and things like that? Or do you get them flown in if there's a... It depends. We okay. do have some huge yep. parts um, if we know they might have a high failure rate. Okay. Um, but there'll be some things that you'll need to get flown in. Have to wait. Yeah. Well, we're that time again. It is. Uh, yep. Now, Liz, would you like to come back next week? I would love to come back next love week. Fantastic. You. So, uh, uh, I'm going to say good night, Keith. Yeah, and I'll say good night. Mm-hmm.